And uh, that's the big issue. The, the other issue is to really who pays those fees. But I'm telling you, it's the landowner pays the fees. The landowner pays all of the fees. The landowner pays your salary. The landowner pays everything. I know you include the houses and everything. But to give you an example, the land, as the logger sitting there says, okay, I can stand and see the fee double. Well, sure, you can stand and see the double. He's got all kind of losing money and all this kind. Of. He's not losing anything because he's going to pass the fees on to the landowner. Or else he don't stay in business. So when you, when you get down to the nitty gritty, it's us. We pay it all. Otherwise, he can't. When he does a, a bid on doing our hauling and so on, then uh, the logs, and obviously he's going to put, cover his fees in that bid. So, so we landowners are very important to it. Your, of course, concern is, your concern is to keep the taxation as low as possible. Taxation as big as possible, but then the, you commissioners sit here, and, and it's a very big issue, is, is the overweight on the law. I'm going to touch that just a little bit. We've got to move on. You, One second. You, you, the roads are extremely important to us. Again, we pay the fees on that kind of stuff, and we pay the taxes on them. So all I'm asking is be considerate. And one of the big issues is what is the road before the logger or whomever used it on waste? And then what is it after he used it? And we're trying to come up with a satisfied conclusion to do that. And one of the ways is through arbitration. That arbitration, if the, if the arbitrator doesn't have a base on what the road was before the logging or the big haul starts, then he has no real uh, dog in the fight because he don't know what he's talking about. So this is a major issue to us, and you're going to hear more about it. I appreciate your time, thank and thank you. you very much. Thank you so much. saying is it would be a whole different scenario if only that road were only used to transport timber but unfortunately most of those are used for people that have to leave their homes and go to the grocery store to work and those sort of things so it puts us in a precarious situation where we have to look at both sides uh, and be sympathetic to both sets of, of, of uh, constituents taxpayers if I may and uh, we certainly don't want to uh, cause undue burden or hard hardship on that landowner, but yet and still, we have to be sure those roads are passable for people that actually need to travel for other reasons rather than uh, uh, transporting logs. Or, and we're not just picking out loggers here. We're also speaking of oil field traffic. Any overweight trucks because that's what the permit says. It doesn't say law, it says overweight vehicle. So it's 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 a it covered more than just timber and we don't want anyone to think that we're just picking on law because we're because we're not. Because a lot of the problem we have in in areas are not just from logging, they're from software trucks, uh, uh, work over rigs, all those sort of things. So we're looking at it as a as a broad picture as Paul, not just one comment. I appreciate what you said very much. And I said this our debate lasted two hours. You don't have it here. I'd be glad to get with you personally or any other commissioners and go into detail on what you're talking about. There is no argument what you're talking about. But there's an FM on that sign. Everyone that was called Farm to Market. Who takes precedence on it? I don't know. But the point is we have to come to a rational decision what's fair and honest to what you address. So there's no debate on paying taxes. The debate is how do we go about doing it. And I would be glad to get with you on that. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, item number eight is a um, consider adding Frontier Camp to a juror donation list. And uh, as, I, as I looked at this, this is, uh, this is a list that prospective jurors have if they decide not to accept the funds for the um, 
uh, serving on the jury and they, uh, they have an opportunity to check uh, a number of uh, charitable organizations. Uh, do I have a motion on this? I don't know if you need me to talk or not. I'll do the back the Second. All, uh, any discussion? Um, I just wanted to clarify. Commissioner's Court has a policy that should there not be any juror donations within a year to any of them, they'll be taken off the list. So if you just want to, you know, keep on top of letting people know okay. that you're on the jury donation list as well. All in favor of including uh, Frontier Camp on the jury donor list, C5, all opposed. Okay. Number nine, uh, considered nominating a representative from the Houston County Prison District Board of Review for 2013 and 14. Um, I honestly don't know enough about it uh, at this point. My personal view, uh, strictly my view, is that we uh, defer this until a later date and, and have a chance to uh, consider it. Yes, she says to you that by March we have another meeting <coughs> later this morning, so we can, we can uh, and I have some names I'd like to Good. contact some people. So we'll, so we'll defer table. this until the uh, table until the All in favor of tabling it until the uh, 26th. Mm -hmm. okay. Item 10, uh, consider advertising for bids for the sale of an 88 pack 16 yard gun truck. Yes, sir, this is a uh, <coughs> truck that we're not using. Just in the paper or on Swigo? Uh, it's your choice. I don't know how. Probably get more advertising than Swigo. Kenan, why don't you try a paper first? I may have someone to draw. Okay. 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 Uh, item 11 is discussed and considered taking action on 2012 National Forest Timber Fund allocation. This is a big issue. I have other copies, so we can pass them to the next one. Let me see. Yes, sir. <coughs> this is a very complicated issue, kind of like what Mr. Hall was talking about. This is another piece of the puzzle that brings it down to our level. Um, excuse my reading this, but I, I tried to summarize the whole timber issue. Um, in 1907, the National Forest System was established with over 192 billion acres of federal lands. Because of this, Congress recognized that this would deprive counties of revenue that would otherwise they that would otherwise receive if the land were kept in private ownership. They provided that counties should receive 25% of the revenues generated from timber production for the benefit of public schools and roads. In the 106th Congress, which was in 2000, Timber sales dropped sharply due to lack of production issues of endangered species, including the Northern Spotted Owl in Oregon and the red cockheaded woodpecker in the Davy Crockett National Forest. In 2000, Congress passed H.R. 2389, which restored stable and predictable annual payments made to the counties for a period of eight years, which was called the Secure Rural Schools and Community Self-Determination Act of 2000. The bill was later reauthorized for an additional four years through 2011 with annual reductions in those allocations. In 2012, the fight again began. The Secure Rural Schools and Community Act was included within the Highway uh, U.S. Transportation Bill, but included 95% of the 2011 amount. 